Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee or bubbly and talk about real things like faith, culture, and society. I screwed that one you up. You messed that one up, didn't you, I'm boss. Chris Fuller. And I'm Mark Hyde. And on today's episode, we're talking about having humility, which when you screw up the intro to a podcast, it really humbles you quick. But we're going to talk about what humility humility is <laughs> and why should Christians, mature Christians, this is gonna be, be good. humble. Mark, are you ready to go? Let's go. Let's go. Hey, but Albert. <laughs> uh, can you tell us the fourth episode we've recorded wow. so far today, guys? Woo! We made it, Fuller. We did. We're on the final countdown so, of today. With the new, we always call it the new format, but it's been like months for you guys. Yes. So forget it's new. It's still new to us. It's only the second new format podcast recording day. session that we've done yeah. for us. Where you know we used to record every Friday night, two episodes per night, and sometimes was, three, sometimes three. But those would be an hour twenty per episode, right? And because of just you know Life. things that are going on with with you i mean, I mean uh, noel had ta- her tonsils taken out lennox right. had surgery right. then we had other family issues and then life with churches was going nuts for both of us yep. we just don't have time to record every single friday night no. so we're down to like once every four to six weeks we're trying to record and That's... just because we're doing we still want to make good content we still want to have good conversations but the episodes are tighter the episodes are shorter they're cleaner but, kind which of. i will say this We've had a lot of good comments from folks and that they, you guys really like the 30 minuter. So if you yeah. do have an, I mean, we're not changing right now, so nope. you can have an opinion. It ain't going to change nothing. But <laughs> let us know seriously two things. Number one, do you like this new style where we jump into the content faster? And then number two, we can't change 30 minutes, but what other things would you like to see in those 30 minutes? Maybe you're like, man, I wish they would do like maybe a little bit more questions, maybe do a little bit more of this. Stats, I don't know. I don't scripture. know what on earth you guys would suggest, but I'm sure yeah, I'm sure Liz has something she would suggest. I yeah. Don't, and I don't as know. far as the banter goes, we do jump on every once in a while from time to time. Short to, once to, in a while. To, to, to do a little banter with you guys and have questions. I got a message the other day, dude, from one of our Facebook listeners that said, it's killing you that you can't banter, isn't it, bro? And I'm like, it is. shut up. It, it is really is. Up. And what did I put tonight? Somebody said, Said, uh, oh, you said uh, if I can keep the banter down, I put banter equals bad. <laughs> That's all <laughs> you I know. Said. I banter, but I will say though, it's been a lot of fun being in the Facebook community. I actually have made friends like like Jesse, my boy Jesse, down in uh, New Orleans. Oh, no, down in Orleans, right? That's how you say it, New Orleans. You're, you're, yeah, don't even try. New Orleans. Too, I don't even you're know. Too northern. But it's white been. It's, I do. I am too northern and way too white. But not enough Cajun. Not. I'm not enough seasoned. I'm not seasoned. But, you know, it's been a lot of fun to just meet a lot of you guys and actually put names to faces and faces to names and have a lot of fun times in that community. So, you guys, thanks for making RTC community awesome. So, before we jump into the episode, we have a review to read. This is a longer review. My it is. goodness. I'm Adam. Gl- I'm glad you got all the long ones. My boy today. Adam wrote a long review. Probably right. longer than this actual That's episode. That's right. You're good. So, so yeah. Adam, I'm assuming it's a dude. I'm going to assume a gender here, Sabrina. So, you put that in your bingo card. Uh, it says, do you want to be challenged in your walk? Do you want to be able to... Dude. Do you want to be challenged in your yes. walk? Do you want to be able to grow in your faith and be encouraged to study and read the scriptures? Do you want to learn something new every week? Keep going. Keep going. One more. One more. Do, do, you, want to, do you want to feel that you are going... So go, I, I'm screwed that one up. Mess that one up. <laughs> do you want to feel? T- no, no. You got you got to do it. You got to do it like the 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 the. Do the, you want um, to feel that you are going to, to going to do? through life? That's where it screwed me up. Going to go through life with the hosts of the podcast? Then this is the podcast for you. I started this podcast. Oh wait, that's your part. I sound like you. You're gonna read this whole thing. Nope. Um, so going back to normal voices. So this is the podcast for you. I started this podcast approximately two months ago. Two months ago, <laughs> I started episode one and had made it through 180 at the time of the writing. This joys. podcast has been a light in my life. This podcast has challenged my faith in certain areas and reinforced it in others. This podcast always makes me think to process what they are talking about. I am blessed that God allowed me to find this podcast. Uh, this IT professional, farmer, fellow Hoosier, Notre Dame fan, loves yes. this podcast. Let's think and go. Let's go. My favorite chip is Cool Ranch Doritos. My yeah. favorite board game is Power Grid. What's Power Grid? I don't know. I don't know. What, what, look a, it up. You got me a cool Favorite ranch. Disney movie is Big Hero 6. Right, Let's go. Right. Immortals, Fallout Boy. Let's do this. Thanks again for the Lifting Podcast. Timothy Mark Hyde. Timothy Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. Uh, Dude, that was amazing. I feel like we need to put that on the front of the website. Have that have there that music is. going. Power Grid board game. Oh, I've heard of this one. That looks intense, dude. 
Is Holy the crap! English language version of the secondary. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, how we'll long is that, that gameplay? I don't know, but maybe we'll talk about that. I so, just love, do you want to be challenged? Do you want to be challenged? That was awesome, Christian Adam, walk? bro, dude, Adam. We want to hook a brother up, man. So let us know your address. Send us an email at realtalkerspodcast at gmail dot com, and we will get a mini swag bag in the mail for you. So today is our fifth episode of the short series is it fifth and final or is it just fifth no there's eight i think total i think so i, I have to say more. sixth next time you can <laughs> sit the episode you have to you can you can just say the one that comes after five before <laughs> seven if you want which episode is this one episode number six five plus one that's five what plus it one. is episode five plus one. remind <laughs> me to do that next time guys so we're on episode five yeah. of this short series about what does it mean to be a mature christian yeah and so today you know last last episode we talked about uh um Wow. Frog. Frog. Fully, Fully rely, rely on, on God. God. Dependence on God. Dog. <laughs> Dependence on God, dog. Uh, and tonight we're going to talk about what does it mean to be humble? Like, like, hmm. why should a Christian be humble? Why is having humility important? Uh, so obviously Colossians is the big overall overarching theme verse for the series. Uh, Even though we're not going to read it. But specifically, maybe I'll read it next time. Ooh, good idea. But specifically, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 8. For the humility, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, considering others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not to his own interests, but rather to the interests of others. Adopt the same attitudes as that of Christ Jesus, who existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of hum uh, humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Mm. That's such like that a one. powerful I love that passage. verse, man. Fun fact, that's the first sermon I ever preached when I was 15 in a preaching competition was this passage right here. Really? Yeah, Philippians 2. All right. Well, there you go. Fun fact. I uh, may have been 16. Fun but. fact with Timothy Markhide. Bam, bam. <laughs> but no, so, so no, the idea so. is effective, but in humility, consider others as more important than yourself. So I brought a stat in. Oh, you did? On a short episode, I brought a stat. Okay. What, so how stat? often is humility mentioned in the Bible? 365 times. One for every day of the year? No. Oh, dang it. What no. word is that one, though? There is a word that's 365 times. Duh. <laughs> I'll look. You, 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 so you the word humble or humility occurred in the Bible around 80 times, depending on the translation, roughly 60 times in the Old Testament, and only 20 times in the New Testament, according to Redeemer City to City. Fear not is said 365 times. Fear not. For every day of the year. That's the, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that, that's that's where the joke came through. So, so, so humble immunity is roughly six times in the OT eight, and 20 in the New Yeah, T. so about 80 times depending on the translation. So, okay. But what is humility? When we talk about humbleness, humil hum humility. Humidity. Wait, hang on. There it is. That hasn't made it an appearance <laughs> for a while. Humility. Uh, what are we talking about? So this comes from, this definition comes from gotquestions.org. Some of our uh, fan it. favorites are our fan favorites. And favorite. then I'll have my own definition. Ooh, all right. Get, we should go with your spot, definition first. Spotty. Mine? Oh, it's C.S. Sure. Lewis's. It's humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Ah, I like that. Yep. So the Bible describes humility as meekness, lowliness, and absence of self. The Greek word translated humility in Colossians 3 uh, 12 and elsewhere literally means lowliness of mind. So we see that humility is a heart attitude, not merely an outward yep. demeanor. There it is. Yep. <laughs> He's like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. There, there it is. is. Keep it 100. Uh, one may put on an outward show of humility, but still have a heart full of pride and arrogance. Jesus said that those who are poor in spirit would have the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter five, verse three, being poor in spirit means that only those who admit to an absolute bankruptcy of spiritual worth will inherit the inherit internal life. Therefore, humility is a prerequisite for the Christian. Now, what do you, what do you think about that last statement? Th that's what I was like, hold up. And I, I had a burp right when you bought He's that. He's like, hold, hold up. <laughs> Therefore, humility is a prerequisite. Why? Now, now, but a, but a prereq in college means you have to have this done before. before you enter. So is that so, saying that you have to be humble before you can ever become saved? Well, what's what does that the, mean? Being saved is an action. What's the human heart dead behind before oh. be, being becoming? Well, you have to humble yourselves and say it's not like like I can't do this myself. I need but, a savior. But, that's what it comes down to. Which look, is humility. Which is humility. I need look, a savior. I, can't I do need a own. savior. Right. Yep. I, I I'm not adequate to pay the sin debt. Christ has paid the sin debt. Mm -hmm. I am not Lord of my life. Who's Lord of my life? 
God. It. So you're that's and that that's the form of it's humility. It's a realization of it. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the form of humility that you're humbling yourself to to confess that there's one who is greater than you. Right. And because if we talk about, you know, the lordship of salvation, the fact of if you're saying that Caesar's not God, but or Caesar's not king, but Jesus is king, and you're saying that I'm not Lord and ruler of my own life. I love how Scott says it, Pastor Scott at Southside, where he goes, Make Jesus Lord and remember what he says? Do you remember? Do you remember? You're only there every Sunday. Do you remember? Do you remember? I remember. Lord and boss of your life. Listen, he always he doesn't says, say that anymore. Oh, he did it on Easter. He, I was there for Easter. He said, "Lord and boss uh, of your life." I haven't heard him say that. Like, well, I'll be ever. at Southside this Sunday, and so if I'm going to see what he's going to say. If he don't say it. One dollar on the line. No, that's. I'm not going to gamble. We'll say one. It's coffee. not a gamble because I'm coffee. right. It's called an investment. Whoa! Whoa! Talk about humility. <laughs> Whoa. So the real question is: this, Should a I'm mature Christian be guys, humble? I'm sorry. Should a, should a mature Christian be humble, Mark? Oh, wait, you're not a mature Christian. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just because I'm short and not I fully grown doesn't mean I'm not a, not a fully okay. mature Shh. Christian. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so so should uh, why should a, a, a mature Christian be humble? Simply put, uh, we are to emulate... Um, Wow, what did, what did I put here? We are to emulate, emulate the one that we serve. The one, yeah. What, but why did I put R? I'm just uh, sorry, I confused myself. We are to emulate. No, no, uh, you did it right. Simply put, we are uh, to emulate the one that we serve. But Jesus. I didn't put we. I put we are to emulate R, the one we serve. Oh, Jesus. I don't know. See, that's why I confused myself. Keeping yourself humble. As he humbled himself to the point of death, so should we follow in his steps, remembering that we uh, we were not. Uh, wow. <laughs> That if it were not for what Christ did on the cross, none of us would even enter the presence of God. Um, that is a humbling thing in itself, right? To think about if it wasn't for Christ dying on the cross, humbling himself to become a man to to so much so and humbling himself so much so that he would die even the death on the cross, we would never be able to be fully restored to our Heavenly Father. We would never have that relationship with God. We would always and forever be lost. That's crazy, ain't it? To yep. think about that and the humbleness of our Savior to come to the earth and do that for us. And so we're so we're called to emulate that. What does Christian mean? Little Christ, right? Tiny Christ, Christ followers. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be those ambassadors for the kingdom. We're supposed to be the disciples. And in tradition, Jewish tradition, as a disciple would study his master or his rabbi so much so that he basically became his rabbi without being his rabbi. Like he did, he walked the same, he talked the same, he read the scriptures the same. That's the way a disciple would be towards their rabbi. And so that is what we're called to be as disciples, to emulate Christ in such a manner that we are a, a, a direct reflection of, of who he was. And I think that's hard, though, for us as Western Americans. I mean, obviously, we have people listen all over the world, too. So I can't just say, as all of us Americans, because <laughs> we got people across the pond, across the we ocean. We are the world. Which is, which is awesome. <laughs> but, you know, as as I would say, as modern-day Western, Western Christians, I think it's hard for us to truly understand what does it mean to not have a lot and to truly be humble in what we have, you know? And so it's really easy for us to not be humble because it's like we look at the jobs we have. We, you know, we're always looking for promotions. Americans, we love titles. Mm -hmm. We love being the boss. I mean, obviously, it, there, there's a new trend right now in millennials about like, you know, you know, uh, Hi, I'm a millennial. No, what's, <laughs> I'm trying to think of, of how to say it in the, in the, the nice, clean way. Oh. But basically, it's like... Um, all I keep thinking is screw the patriarchy, but that's that's part of it. But kind of like uh, stick it to the man, you know, where it's like, you know, we don't want to be in the C-suite. We don't want to climb the corporate ladder. We don't want the titles. We're looking for a lifestyle versus this. But then we're on Instagram all the time and we see everything that everybody else has. And then we start going, oh, why can't we have that? I want life like this. I want this. And it all of a sudden turns into not so much a humility in terms of humbling ourselves to follow Jesus, but more like, woe is me. I wish I could have more stuff. I, gotta keep I wish up I with could have Joneses. more things. I wish I could have more of this. I wish I could have more of that. And then when we get it, we kind of, um, I mean, there are, there are a lot of rich people that are humble. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like in the more comfort that we have, it's harder to follow Jesus who said, you know, foxes have dens, but I don't. I don't have a place. The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Right. And he sent his disciples out and he basically said, take this clothes on your back, the staff in your hand and go make it happen. Right. And you know, but for us as Americans and, and for us in, in the world that we're living in, we're so easy to stay comfortable and not become reliant on God, not to stay humble, not to, not to keep this mindset. Or if we do, we almost have this self, 
self-deflating mindset where we almost have to be like, oh, what was me? Mm. Like, I'm just terrible. I'm just awful. No one wants to be my friend. No one wants to do this. Because that's what we think what humility is. You know, and we grew up in a world where it's like, take pride in your work. Take pride in this. Take pride in that. This place has great pride. We want to have team team pride in all these different things. And so how do we... How do we figure out what's good humility versus bad humility and good pride versus bad pride? Well, I think it goes back to what we talked about earlier. What What is humility? And humility is the meekness and the lowness of an absence of self. If you're focused on self, you're not humble. If you're not focused on self, if you're focused on others and, and the lowliness of mine, um, I think that's when you become humble. you you, you got to be poor in spirit in order to be that humble self self to inherit the kingdom of heaven, right? You have to humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Uh, There's all these different scriptures that come to mind with all that. But I really, I just really absolutely love um, what Philippians 2, 1 1, 1 through 11, I wanted to expand it a little bit more. And what does it look like? And and the very beginning, you know, the first time we read it, we were only, we we started at verse three, but getting into verse one and expanding out to verse 11 really talks about how we, emulate Christ and, and, and we should be encouraged by the things that Christ did. And this is how we should do this. And it says, if then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the spirit, if any affection and mercy, make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love united in the spirit intent on one purpose, do nothing out of selfish ambition. Do you see the, the lead up to that? Yep. The lead up is so, it's beautiful. Having, uh, make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love and united in spirit intent on one purpose. What do you think that one purpose is? Loving God and loving Spre- others. Spreading the gospel, man. That's mm-hmm. what it is. That's the one purpose. This is what this is what they're talking. Paul's talking about. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not to his own interest, but rather to the interest of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had uh, when he had came, come as a man, wow, he had come as a man. <laughs> he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on the cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. He's Lord to the glory of God, the father. He, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. He is Lord because he was obedient even to the point of death that even death on a cross and that is why God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. It, it's just amazing. It's beautiful, right? And we're supposed to have the same attitude, right? Adopt the same attitude. This is verse five, adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus who existed in the form, right? So we're supposed to humble ourselves, even unto death, right? We're mm-hmm. supposed to have that type of attitude for others, for the love of others, for, for being able to serve others, for, for putting others above ourselves, for not thinking of ourselves so highly for, for again, uh, having that absence of self, stop, stop worrying so much about self and start worrying about God and his mission and, and loving others and showing others God. And I think that, you know, you know I was going to ask the same question I did last, well, I guess two weeks ago of what's the litmus test in this passage gives us what the litmus test is, is right. the fact of don't look out for just yourself. Don't be looking out for just number one, but look out for the interest of others. And I guess this would be the question of is what does that look like? You know, so many times when someone has a need that we, and, and, and the Bible even says, um, it's a sin to see a brother and sister who has a need and you're able to fulfill that need. And you say, go on your way, be warm and be fed. And right. you're like, bro, he hasn't eaten in two stinking weeks right. and you got a whole freaking pot roast inside your house. Like sit down, shut up and eat some food, bro. Let's go. Yeah. Like, come on. Like that's what that litmus test is. And so many times we look out for ourselves rather than, than looking out for others. And right. um, I, I kind of lost my train of thought where I was going right. with it before I went on the pot roast rant. That's because you're taking pot roast now. <laughs> I want some, dude, I want some meatloaf. You got some meatloaf in your oven. <laughs> I, I wish. I, 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 yeah, I wish. I Anyways. Had, I had a salad tonight. I did not have meatloaf. 
But but either way, but you know, with the idea of what this litmus test is, is the fact of do oh, oh I know where I was going with this. Do you care for the needs of others rather than yourselves? Because most of the time when someone actually does need help or someone asks you for help, isn't it always at the most inconvenient time for you? Mm. Like that's what I've noticed. You know, like I was always taught, um, you need to have enough margin in your life where if you get interrupted and it, it is a legit divinely it's a divine interruption. Do you have enough margin in your life in order to step in and fulfill that? Or do you have to say like, nah, bro, I'm too busy. I can't do it. I got to bounce. When in reality, Jesus said for what you did for the lowest, least of these, you also did for me. You right. don't even know. Maybe you were entertaining angels and you don't even know. Mm. And maybe I, I was, one way of loving others is not going so fast between travel sports and work. And I mean, sometimes we do too much at church where we, we got to go, 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 go. I can't stop and ask you how you're doing because I got stuff to do. You know, somebody got, somebody got to stir that chili. Like there is some truth to sure. that. But at the same time, one way we could love others is live our lives intentionally where there is actual space, where we're not running from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing, making our family lives so busy that when someone says, hey, can you can you help me move this Saturday? Nope, because we got this, 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 mm. and this, and this. When in reality, it's the fact of what's humility is due to others as you would have them do under you. And I'm not saying do this for karma. Right. Like, oh, I'm going to help you, so therefore you owe me one because that's... Right. That's the opposite. But more the fact of, do you have enough space in your life? Or if someone says, yo, dude, I'm really struggling. Can, can you talk right now? Like mm -hmm. I had a buddy call and I, I made the joke with you. I'm like, well, if, if I knew who it was, I probably wouldn't have picked it up because of, of just what I was doing for the day. But I picked it up and ended up being a really, really cool conversation and, and a really cool reconnection with an old friend. And I mean, not to say it was bad as one of the fact that I was just at work, but you know, if, if we are constantly thinking of, Oh no, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. Go away. I have to do this. Is that really loving someone more and looking out for their interests more than your own? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, That's my, it, my thought. Sorry. I, I, I can't <laughs> have said it any better. It's, it's exactly what you're saying. It's, mm -hmm. it's being, it's thinking about others. It's, it's being humble. It's not being too busy to help others. It's not being too busy for God, which is the more important thing, right? And humbling ourselves before God and not thinking of ourselves so highly that we think we don't need God. But, but going back to what we talked about previously about having our dependence on God, right? And, mm -hmm. and humbling ourselves to say, yeah, it's not about me. It's not what I want. It's not in my strength, Lord. It's in your strength. And I, I get through this day, Lord willing, right? Because it's his will, whether we make it through that day or not, because he knows the time of our death. He knows the time of our birth. He knew us from the, our mother's womb. He knows every hair on our head. He he takes care of the, the grass in the field and clothes them with flowers, and he takes care of the birds in the sky and feeds them. That's what he does. He sustains us in each and every day of our life. Now, it may look differently than maybe what the mystical way we think, but it is God who is sustaining us in our life, and we need to be humble about that and really recognize who the Creator is and what He has done for us, as Philippians chapter 2 has said, and how He emptied Himself for us and the love for us, and just as He did that for us, we should do that for us. So us. let's get down to the, the brass tags, yes, is what sir. I would like to say. Let's do some oh, application, right? So what are some practical ways, because we, we, we are very good with the mindset and the idea of humility, but what are some, and, and this is, I mean, neither one of us have prepared this, so this might be a really terrible train wreck. We'll see what happens. But what are some actual feet to the ground, practical ways that we can show humility in order for, you know, us to put other people first? And I'm going to warn the Facebook group that we're going to be a little bit late. Yeah. I would just say that the only thing I have is humbling yourself and putting people first, right? Putting God first in the, in the beginning of your day. We talked about um, a couple weeks or a couple episodes ago about praying that prayer of Lord, make my prayer life better. Well, I would say, Lord, make me a more humble person. That would be the next thing to pray, right? If I'm going to give you a little one-liners to pray every night to help your prayer life start. Uh, Lord, teach me to pray. Lord, help me to pray. And now, Lord, help me to be humble and, and teach me to be humble. And let me tell you, he's going to take your circumstance and any individual uh, things that you have going on in life, and he will show you humility, either willingly, or he'll show it to you in a way that is going to really humble you. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, that's there's that old saying, uh, open mouth, insert foot. This has happened to me <laughs> many, many times. I don't know said, why my brain went open mouth, insert food. That's where my brain went. I'm no, no, no tacos it. today. Uh, <laughs> that's five, one tacos with food. Uh but but 
there's been many times in which I've prayed that prayer of God, teach me humility, and I've said something stupid the next day, and then I've had to eat crow. And let me tell you, it's a humbling experience. And and, and, and so that's the kind of where my brain went too is the more the fact of be willing to be corrected. Mm. Like this is probably the biggest thing I struggle with 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 some of the kids is the fact of when when mom and I are trying to correct you, we're trying to help you. We're not saying you're a freaking moron. We're not saying you you're can't an say idiot. that word. Don't say that. Oh, word. that's true. That's true. Um, we get I can't in trouble. Say every time you we say are that. a dong gone moron. <laughs> Or what does Dave Ramsey wants to say? Yeah, he says "dong gone moron." Um, but you know, when 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 you do something wrong, be willing to admit you have done wrong. That's mm. one way. Another way is to be willing to receive correction even when it sucks. That's that's another one. Um, but another big one that that I think is the fact of be willing to do the hard thing even when you know it's going to suck. I think that's the big one for me. Next, right like, like even, even down to the simple things of the fact of, I need to have this conversation with my spouse. I need to have this conversation with my kid and I don't want to do it because it sucks. Or for me, it's the fact of going, like I, I, like I have to go to bat for my kid and, and I don't really want to do that. Or, right. you know, because the fact of, I need to take care of them, not just take care of me, even though, I may look like an idiot doing it. I'm doing it on, on their behalf. Yeah. And so I think the big one for me was showing humility is a being prepared to admit when you're wrong and that you made a mistake. I think that's a big one. And I think another big one is to live with your eyes wide open and look around and search and see who, who is hurting in our congregation. And am I able to step in and fill a need? Mm. Because if you're not walking around looking for folks who are like, you know, like, like you're looking at church, like, man, Betsy looks really sad over there. I'm gonna go see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, are, are, is she okay? And you take time out of your day to go say, you, you, you doing all right? Like, you look like you're, you, you look like you look something heavy on your heart. And then be prepared for them to share and then be prepared for you to maybe have to step up and do something about it. Yeah. So that's what I would say for humility is the fact to be willing to admit when you're wrong and make mistakes and own up to it. But then also be looking around for ways where you can literally step in and maybe just be the hands and feet of Jesus, someone else. That's all I got, man. That's I like all I got, it, man. Anything else like for you? I'm good. All right, my dude, let's do some fun facts. Time for fun facts with February. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my dude, we got to get over to that Facebook live stream real quick, dude. Yes, so what do. is the fun fact to end the day? The fun fact of the day is a lightning bolt is five times hotter than the surface of the sun. The charge carried by a bolt of lightning is so intense that it has a temperature of around 30,000 oh, degrees Celsius or 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, hot dang. Yeah, literally really? Hot. Yes, very So hot. those who have been struck by lightning... They survive some hotness. They can live on the sun. You can, you can go to the sun. It's made of cheese. Would you eat it? I would. Sorry. You're as hot as a lightning bolt on a summer day. Someone please use that pickup line. Someone please pick up my man. You was hotter than a lightning bolt. You know what else is hotter? What is hotter, Fuller? I, I don't know. Me? You? Go I'm not ahead. sure where you're going with this we're one. We're going to go ahead. Kind of weird. And we're gonna go Let's ahead just, just rewind that one and yeah. just try it again. So you know what else is great, Fuller? What's that? The fact that you guys tune in every single, uh, every other week now and hang out with us here on RTC. If you have a question that you would love for us to answer on the show, please do not hesitate to reach out. Real Talk Christian Podcast at gmail.com with your questions, or you can go over to the website realtalkchristianpodcast.com search the entire archive because maybe we've done an episode that you maybe are interested in and if you haven't already head over to the youtube page real talk christian podcast hit that subscribe button and the bell notification oh shoot Uh, try again try again I messed it up. Hey. hey, so when we're on, you are aware. Which we are going to be on right, right now. now. So we are signing off. We love you guys. And until next time, take it easy. 